Bible study, and this is uh, Wednesday, March the 10th, and we're on lesson number 16, which will be our final lesson on our New You and the Holy Spirit series. We've been in been in a while, maybe at least six plus months, and then, you know, if you if you focus on the last four weeks, the majority of what we were, um, of course, that's kind of the process that I missed a couple of steps because I really it really de didn't get taught or. I maybe wasn't just listening when I was in church, but you know the main thing is uh, there's lost people out there that need to be saved, and we talked about that word "saved" Sunday. It's zozo. It means not just your sins being saved. That is great. That is you know missing missing hell and living forever with God, and that doesn't start when we go to heaven. That starts when we come to Jesus, and we start that relationship with the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Well, the Holy Spirit kind of. That was the teaching I didn't have much on. In other words, I go to Jesus, I get born again. I didn't, didn't really understand the word born again. I get saved, my sins get taken away. You want to get baptized in water, that's the ordinance of the church, just doing things that are right. That, in other words, that's your outward confession of you're, you're putting your faith in Christ Jesus. And he said, be, be water baptized. He had his cousin baptize him. And when you come up out of the water, you come up, it's just saying the old man's dead and the new man is rising up in Christ. But then, after Jesus was baptized in water, the Father sent the Holy Ghost down from above. And, and he came down, the Holy Spirit came down in the form of a bird, of a dove, so that we could actually, that's what John was looking for. Because God gave John a vision and said, the one you see, the dove come down, or the Spirit descend in the form of a dove, that will be my son. And John, that's how John knew that. So that's the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and he was poured out on the day of Pentecost, 50 days after Jesus was resurrected. And that was a feast that the Jews had celebrated, and the Bible says when the, when the day of Pentecost had fully, see, it fully came. So we're not waiting on Pentecost anymore. We're just, once we get born again, we just receive. It's just as simple as believing and receiving. So tonight we're talking about We've heard of a lot of believing, and if we've done some, a lot of receiving, then you've got to get started. And everything that faith does requires you to do something. Because faith is a verb. Faith is an action. Faith is uh, like getting baptized in water by faith. In other words, you do what you believe the Word says. So to be a, a disciple doesn't mean that God doesn't love you if you never speak in tongues, you never get filled with the Spirit. You're on your way to heaven, but you miss so much opportunities down here that you could... Uh, do, do more for the kingdom because the Holy Spirit, without Him, the Bible says we don't have the power. That power, he, power. We are endued with power from on high to be a, a witness. Now, we can still witness about Jesus, but uh, I'll probably think of an example a little bit early. Let me go ahead and get started. Get started. That's what the name of the title is. Y'all ready to get started? Get your, get your motor started. Uh, you don't have to wait... You don't have to tarry no more in Jerusalem. You ain't got to go to Jerusalem to get started. Hey Amen. All you got to do is believe. And find another believer that believes in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that is speaking in tongues, that's flowing in the gifts of the Spirit, and get them to pray with you and, and, and believe with you. So speaking in tongues or speaking in our most holy faith, the Bible says, or with a stammering tongue, and that, that's what Isaiah prophesied, with a stammering tongue, it will be a refreshing, that's what the Old Testament said, when, when this day would come, uh, when the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, it would be a day of refreshing. Refreshment, amen? You know, after you have a good meeting and, you know, a, a good employer, boss, have a good meeting, well, have, he'll have you some refreshments. you get to take a break. Well, you know, thank God after Jesus came, God re gave a refreshing. You know, when Jesus, remember what we heard Sunday, when Jesus came, touching Jesus changes everything. And he's got so much he wants us to do, so much he wants to give. So speaking in tongues is not something you do just once to prove that you've received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Uh, it's a, <laughs> you know, once when I really told my wife I really, really loved her, when I really, really knew what love meant, I just don't have to say it one time, do we, Larry, do we, Frankie? They like, us to, they like to hear that word, I love you. But more, every more, day. every day, and, and the women could probably say more, more than just saying it, but do you really mean it? Because saying something and meaning something can be two different things. 
In other words, it, yeah, in other words, what love are you talking about? Because, like I say, I'm, there's a, there's a difference between loving my pizza, loving the dog, and loving my wife, right? And and our wife better know that we know the difference in the type of love. Because you better love your wife or your your mother or your father uh, more than you love pizza, or more than you love the dog, right? So, uh, talking about getting started after we get baptized in the Holy Spirit uh, and receive the gift of speaking in tongues. That's really, it's when, it's when our Christian life really, really start, get started. It's when, because the Holy Spirit, what is his ministry? Disciples, what is, what is the purpose of the Holy Spirit? He's our helper. He's our, helper. He's our comforter. He's the third part of God. He's the third person of the Godhead, and he is there to show us Jesus. Jesus, in his physical body, had to leave and go find his position in heaven to, to forever intercede and pray for us. But he said, I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm going to send another, and that another is the same. In other words, just like me, the, the DNA God, and he will be with you forever. When he comes on the inside of you, and I've been to many, many times I went to church and went down to the altar, and then went back to church and what went down to the altar, went back to church and went down to the altar to kind of like get born again, again, to get saved, you know. It's good to go down to the altar, but when you get, get something, once you get born again and God seals you with your spirit, that's done. But then there's some that, you know, they just go down to the altar. You need to go down again until you get it. <laughs> I'm not saying not, you keep going until you get it, but I finally got it, and I got started. I said I got started with a relationship, with a communion with Jesus, with God. And that's what the Holy Spirit is there for. Um, the Holy Spirit is a powerful tool, and we're talking about speaking in tongues, getting started. It's a powerful tool to edify, say edify. edify. That means to build yourself up spiritually. So whenever we pray in tongues, or pray in the Holy Spirit, you cause yourself to rest. To rest. Remember when David said, be still, my soul. Be still. In other words, if David could have prayed in the Holy Ghost, that's what he'd been saying. In other words, David was, was wanting to commune with God, and he was telling his, his mind to shut up, and he was wanting his spirit to speak because all these things were coming against us. And how much more do we need that today to have that rest and when we can pray in the Holy Spirit and we can get that rest, that peace that Jesus talked about? Not that the world gives, that peace that just passes understanding. You can just sit there in the middle of, of chaos and have the peace of God settle in where it's, it's tangible. You can reach out and touch the peace of God. That was one of our first witnesses when me and my wife got born again, got saved, got filled with the Holy Spirit. My family that had come over before would come over. We'd have birthday parties and ice cream and cake. And I started getting some uh, compliments. It's just, this house is just so much, there's peace here. There's just peace here. And you know what we learned? That's, that's the peace of God that Jesus was talking about. You couldn't understand it, but you could sense it. You could tell I can tell, you can tell this but even if you're not saved, if somebody's having an argument, you're not going to do when you walk into it. It's like you walk into a different atmosphere. I'm talking about a, a knockdown, throwdown, strife. You can tell, you can sense it in the, it's a spiritual force. So how much more to have that rest? It's a spiritual force. And um, we cause ourselves to rest. We build ourselves up on our most holy faith. You can't get no holier than God. He's holy. And when you pray to him in his language, come on, you're praying a holy language, you're going to get a benefit. Uh, the holy faith, and, you can, and it's got to be by faith. When you pray in, a, in an unknown tongue, that tongue can be tongues of men, we talked about, and it can be tongues of angels. A mystery to my natural mind, but to God, it's his language, and then he, you pray for the understanding that your understanding be fruitful. And it might, it might happen right after you get done praying, or it might happen a week, a year, two years, but it's going to come. The revelation, God's going to make your understanding fruitful. You might not know it was because you prayed in tongues, but I tell you, you will change, it will change and sharpen your life when you, I didn't pray in tongues, and then I have. I didn't have the gift, didn't know it was available, but then I did, and I benefited from it. You've got to believe the Scriptures. If, Jesus, if Paul said, I, I pray God I speak in tongues more than you all, then there's, there's a benefit. And that doesn't mean you won't have trouble. Because Paul, look at his life. He had a lot of, he had shipwrecks, beatings, whipped, stoned, 
But he had this testimony. I know Jesus. And through all that, God still got him out of situations. And he made it to his destiny. He made it to Rome. Amen? No matter what happened, no matter what the devil threw at him. So we, as we speak in uh, tongues in the Holy Spirit, we speak forth hidden wisdom. Anybody like wisdom? Like to know something you didn't know? <laughs> and believe for interpretation. Revelation knowledge will open up. Now that revelation is not information. Revelation is something God gives you that you had no idea. It's revealed to you. Uh, revelation knowledge will open up and supply answers that you couldn't get going to seminary, that you couldn't get going to uh, App State, that you couldn't get going to UNC Charlotte or UNC Carolina. You can, go, you can go to all the universities and study all you want, but unless you seek the Lord with your whole heart, that's when you're going to find true wisdom. I'd rather have revelation and information any day. And I'd rather have information in the Word of God, but then that's the written Word, that's the logos, but don't leave out the rhema. That's when you're expecting to hear something that it jumps up off the page. It can jump off a billboard. Amen. <laughs> uh, it might say, uh, well, God spoke to me through new development, new housing development. It said, it's your time. Talking about it's your time to come to this neighborhood and buy and invest. But when I seen it's your time, that was the Lord showing me it's my time to do some things for the kingdom that I've been preparing in my heart. That word, those words jumped off of that billboard and spoke to me. Because that's God. He's a spirit. And see, I was seeking him. And that... that Speaking in tongues, God just revealed those words off a sign and put it in my heart and spoke to me and said, no, it's your time, and it's the church's time to do some great things for the kingdom. And, but your natural mind will try to explain that away. Oh, that was just you. That was just that you're, you're having a side effect from that double water cheeseburger you just ate. You know? <laughs> no, you need this. God can speak even when you're full of food. He can still speak. But the devil has fought this so hard. Now, y'all got to remember me. I didn't go to church a lot, so I didn't know a lot of things battling in the churches. But Andrew was brought up in a strict Baptist church, and he said, you know, if you spoke in tongues back in his day, and this was over 40 years ago, that you were of the devil. They kicked when he, when he got baptized and spoke in tongues after he came back from Vietnam and started teaching the Sunday school, they kicked him out. Gave him the left foot of fellowship, and that was a bad thing. And they kicked out a, bad, a good thing. He said, you know, this is, this is written by Andrew, his commentary. This is one of his uh, Bible commentaries, studies he did. But he said he, when he went to Vietnam, he was a Baptist. But when he got over there, now he, was, he, he got born again and got filled with the Holy Ghost. He hadn't spoken in tongues yet, but, well, I could be wrong, I think he did. But he got over there, and there was so much sin and stuff going on, not including just the war they were in, but he said he, he, he signed up for a chaplain's assistant. So he had plenty of time that he didn't have nothing to do, but he prayed and he studied in the Word of God because you would sit out and you would guard your camp for eight, 12 hour shifts just sitting there. So what did he do? He got his light and he read the Bible and he prayed in the Holy Spirit. And he got to where, I forget, I think he served maybe, I don't know, maybe two years, three years over there. I could be a little wrong. But when he, when he said, I came back, he said, I didn't try to. He said, but I wasn't a Baptist anymore. He just believed the Bible. He didn't tear no pages out. He didn't skip no chapters. He just, you know, he built a relationship because it was him and Jesus over there. And he said bullets were flying and he was praying for his enemy because that's what the word says. Pray for those that despitefully use you. He said he was firing at the Vietnamese and praying for them at the same time. And that's, only God can do that. Uh, <laughs> and he said there was times that the Holy Ghost said, move, get out of here. You know, he told his Buddies, come on and get out. We got to move. And the next thing you know, bombs hit the bunkers. You know that was the Holy Spirit that He was building that fellowship with, saying, "Hey, it's time to move." You know, God, we're not we're not no good to God dead early in life down here, because you know our body is the only thing that's keeping us here on this earth to preach the gospel. You know, Jesus, once you leave your body, you're going to heaven, and you can't operate on the earth no more. So that wouldn't have been good. So the devil's fought hard against this gift. Um, you might have other testimonies than I do. Because he's afraid that he knows what would happen if speaking in tongues ever became part of a, every Christian's daily life. Every morning you've got to get up and before the day is over, unless you're fasting, your body's got to have food. And you've got to have water to exist. And, and a lot of times, and that's the natural part, but we, the most important part, even over exercise, the Bible talks, but physical exercise is the word, the study of the word. The importance of the word in our life. Speaking it to yourself. 
praying in the Holy Spirit to yourself in songs and hymns. You can sing in the Holy Ghost and, and build yourself up and, and get your song going, get your tune going. So the Holy Spirit, He inspires. He doesn't speak in tongues. He inspires us, and when you speak in tongues, you speak in the language. Uh, but we have to say them. Because it says in Acts 2, 4, and just so that somebody else can read this other than me, Judy, what does Acts 2 and 4 say? And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now when it says they were all filled, the they there is the disciples. The Bible doesn't say that speaking in tongues is only just for the, the, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher. In my Bible, it says all those believers, all those that believed, if, you're, if you believe in it, you can receive it. Believers shall lay hands on the sick, not just pastors. The believers shall lay hands on the sick. They shall speak with what? Other tongues. It's if you believe in Jesus and what he said, and what he said was going to happen on the day of Pentecost, but you've got to believe it by faith. You've got to get out of the boat like Peter. It's not natural to walk on water. It's supernatural. It's not natural to speak in tongues. It's supernatural. And the world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. Now, they'll, they'll try to explain it away. Even some good Christians will try to explain something away they have no understanding of, no experience in this. What do you do? You just love them. And you don't try to, if, if they're from that position, you just give them, if the Lord leads you, give a testimony of what happened when you spoke in tongues and, or laid hands on the sick, some, give them an experience, but then don't, don't get in an argument because you're not going to win nobody that way. Uh, notice the Spirit gave them utterance. So it's not just pure, the, purely the Holy Spirit speaking through you. You've got to do your part. Even when you get saved, the grace has been provided. Jesus has already been to the cross. The blood's been shed, but it's up to us when we hear to what? Hear and obey. Who has believed our report, Lord Isaiah said? Who has believed the report of the Lord? What is the report? Jesus brought good news that God's not angry with you anymore. He brought in a new covenant. And, man, that's good news. We need to go to church and hear some good news. <laughs> Amen. The world needs to hear some good news about life and that more abundantly. I ain't talking about my life. I'm talking about the life I now live in Christ Jesus. Come on, y'all too quiet in here tonight. Y'all got to help me preach this thing. I know it's Wednesday night Bible study, but it, sometimes it turns into a Wednesday night preaching. Come on, Reed. You, I'm going to have to shake him up a little bit. And get, I, usually can't, I can't get a paragraph. He's usually, usually giving some, adding something now. So it's similar to how the gift of teaching works. Now, I never, before Christ, I was not a teacher. Now, God knew I was, but I didn't, <laughs> because there's no way. I was what you call, uh, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the boy that goes to the back of the room and don't call on me in school. And don't look at me, teacher, because I don't want to say anything. I'll pass, but don't ask me to do anything. I didn't make it through all my classes like that, but when God calls you to the front, He anoints you. He's not looking for your ability. He's looking for your availability. And if you'll be available, and if you'll trust Him, He'll put His ability in you. It's in you, but He won't, He'll draw it out of you. He won't, he won't ask you, to go, he won't ask you to, go, to go run a marathon if you've never run a 50-yard dash, will He, Reed? He'll ask you to do the small thing first. Help your pastor clean the toilets, change the drapes, Vacuum the, I'm not talking about the, the ministry. And when he sees you faithful over something little, then he'll give you something. He'll give you a little bit bigger assignment. Amen. And he wants you to do great things. But remember, God loves you more than what you do for him. He wants you to have a relationship with him. He's a jealous God. He wants you and all of you. But he wants you to do great things. But he knows without him, Jesus said, without me, you can't do nothing that's going to amount to anything. I tell you what, there's a lot of people that's working, made millions and billions of dollars. If they don't have Christ, Jesus says, you're not doing nothing. You're, just, you're going to profit nothing in this earth. What do you, you've got all that in the bank and you die and you don't know Jesus? You've gained nothing. You've left some things to the, in the world, but you're going to leave this world. And there's two places you're going to hit. You're going to hit hell or you're going to hit heaven. Two H's, one hot and one is just right.
Remember three little pig, or who was it that had the pudding? Come on, thank you, thank you, Derek. Straighten my preschool theology out. I, they, they, didn't, they didn't like their pudding. Some was too hot, some was cold, too cold, but some was just right. God is just right. Amen. He knows you inside out. And you, you get to know Him more when you're praying the Holy Spirit. You build yourself up in the Holy Ghost. The world wants to tear you down, but Jesus is here to build you up. So God inspires the messages. Amen. There's preaching, and then there's anointed preaching. If God is there, and the anointing is there, it's going to change lives. Amen. It can't just be something a man puts together without, you know, I ask God every week, Lord, what would you have me to do, have me to say? It might be what I've been preparing, or I'll get up there and read, read those this. It might totally change. <laughs> just let, let the Lord have his way. Now, he's got to use you. He, he needs us in the body, but we need his, his inspiration, his anointing. Uh, God, now Andrew is a Texan, and he said, and, uh, God doesn't speak in a Texas drawl. He's got, God's got one language, but he uses through all, once those languages got confused and we were, now there's all kind of languages, God brought it back through Christ. He brought us, Jew and Gentile, he brought us together at the cross. Amen? Uh, the Holy Spirit supplies the content, and we deliver it. Uh, I told you about the dog. You know, I've got one dog. It was Dallas's dog. Kelsey's trained the dog as a puppy. But think about it. I speak English, and that dog understands it. But what if that dog had been put in a Latino's house that speaks Spanish? The dog still understands. Why? Because he learns when you say no, whether it's I don't know how you say no in Spanish. I know uno is one. <laughs> I know very little Spanish. I know thank you is gracias. <laughs> so if I tell the dog gracias, gracias, and I pet him and rub him, he knows that's a good thing. Whether it's English or Spanish, because the dog is learning by what you say and what you do. Well, people are learning Christ by what you say and what you do. If you say you love God, Jesus said, if you love me, he says, you'll do what I say. And if, you don't, if I, we don't do what God says, people are saying, they said they're a Christian, but they ain't loving me. They ain't loving me. That wasn't too lovely. Then you're falling short somewhere, and it ain't, it ain't God's fault. It's my fault. Amen? So I just got to get in the Word and repent would be a good place to start. Lord, forgive me. I was wrong. I've said some things wrong. I had to go back and correct myself. I tell Reed, you guys, if I say something, I get excited sometimes. I might say something. One, one thing I said, and I, I edited it, and I need to bring it for the church. I got excited because, in other words, I got born again at my home on my couch, asked for the Lord for forgiveness, received it, didn't feel any better on the outside, but knew I believed that word. And I acted on it. I acted like I was saved because I went to church. <laughs> I hadn't been going. I said, I want to go to church. That's a big change for somebody that was knocking holes in the wall. If your wife said, I, I get mad, hit the wall, try to make my point. Come on. I, I had to putty that wall years later. <laughs> I know how big it was, Leo. It took, it took a lot of coat, a lot of, a lot of sheep rock, mud. It took a lot of mud. Well, God put, put me, took me out of that mud, miry clay, the mud, and he changed my life. He took, that, he took that anger and that hatred away out of my heart. He put a stone, a heart of flesh in me. What was I talking about? I was going to make a point there. Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. I wouldn't try to skip that. But I got excited that Sunday, and I talked to her, I said, uh, you don't have to go to church to get born again. I got saved sitting at home, and I, I think I even mentioned on the third time, I said, you don't have to go to, crawl, go to the cross, but you do need to go to the cross. Mm -hmm. Jesus went to the cross, and that's where we go. What I was trying to say was, is Jesus is not on the cross anymore. You go to the cross, but then you don't stay there. What, what I was wanting to say is you go on into Pentecost. Mm -hmm. You go and you get the power, and you go live this life full of victory. But you've got to go to the cross. That's where, that's where the blood sets you free. So that was wrong, and I edited it out when, when I heard it. I was like, man, I didn't. No, you've got to go to the cross. But you get excited sometimes sharing some things. And you, you, you say some things, and you just need to stand corrected. So I stand corrected on that. Had it not been for the cross, we'd be lost. That's as simple as that. But, uh, but
But you know what I mean? I, my faith is not in that, sim that cross that I wear on my necklace. My faith is in the one who died for me on that cross. Mm -hmm. The cross is just a symbol of, of the, the debt that had to be paid. The curse was put on that cross. Our Savior hung on that cross, but he's not there anymore. Yeah. He paid the debt. He paid. Amen. And it had to be done. It was prophesied. He died on a tree. So fear, let me get back here. It's similar to how we, how we speak in tongues. It's the same way as the gift of teaching. Andrew said, if I stood before a group of people and prayed, God, please speak through me, but don't let me say anything that's not of you. Don't let me say anything that's not of you. That kind of restricts God to what, what you can say. Uh, and then waited for him to make me speak, I'd never say anything. Because we're not totally, our body's got to be changed to be, to see Jesus face to face, our body has to be changed from this incorruptible we got put on, the corruptible has got put on the incorruptible. But, so to, to say, God, when I open my mouth, don't let anything but be of you, we're not going to do too good because we're just not there yet. Um, so it's my responsibility to step out in faith and just start talking where I am. And God, you know, sometimes we can add to what God says. You know, we can add, sometimes we add our opinions or, in other words, God will give you something to say inspired. Sometimes I like how, uh, uh, I think Jim talked about it Sunday. He says we can, sometimes as faith people, we can start out in faith, praying in faith, and next thing you know, we pray too long, we pray ourselves right out of faith. <laughs> Because we start, we pray about it too long, and next thing you know, we like we praying ourselves right out of what we're believing for. It don't. Jesus said, "You you don't have to have this long, lengthy prayer, beating your chest in the streets." Man, it's just that. I told a, a good prayer, Vicky was talking about is just, Lord, help, help me, Lord. I need some help here. So, God inspires the messages, but they come out through our personality, vocabulary, and mannerisms. You know, sometimes I might walk up on the stage, I might take my shoes off. But now Reed, that might, Reed, Reed might have a problem with that, taking his shoes off, walking up on the stage. <laughs> Why? Different personalities, different characters. You know, he, we just raised different. Uh, you know, I, I, I ran outside and played barefoot all my life, you know, most of the time growing up. And for me to have to go to school and wear shoes, that was a hard thing in the summertime because I didn't want to wear my shoes. I, it seems like to me I could just run faster barefooted. I just felt like I could. I don't know. I, it probably wasn't true, but I felt like I was speedy, speedy, speedy when I took those shoes off. Uh, fear will short circuit your ability to speak in tongues. Fear of man, the Bible says, will bring a snare. It'll snare you every time. If, you, if you're fearing what people think about you, you just got to step out in faith. You know, we we got to quit criticizing Peter. He stepped out of folk, he stepped out of that boat, but there was other eleven disciples. They didn't. You know, Peter at least he got out there and he said, "I'm you know what? I'm gonna get out there where Jesus is because where Jesus is is where the fruit is." <laughs> Man, if you a tree, if you hug that trunk, that ain't where the fruit is. The fruit's out there on the branch, and you get out there on that branch. Sometimes that thing starts swaying, it starts leaning. It's kind of like is it gonna break anytime? But that's where the fruit is. So. We've got to get out of the boat. We've got to get out there on the branch, man, and uh, give God some faith. Give him faith. We might have, you might have trouble at first. Or if you worry about it or try to analyze what you're saying, you're going to have trouble. The Holy Spirit is inspiring you to speak. But it's your fear that blocks it. Fear is a faith blocker. You have to yield your tongue. You know, when you get on the interstate, you what? You yield to oncoming traffic. You give the right away. So you, God is the right way. Everything Jesus did, he did it right. He said, this is the way. I'm the way, the truth, the life. I'm going to send another comforter, and he's going to help you. So you have to yield to what? The comforter, the one that's going to comfort and help you. You yield your tongue to the Holy Spirit, and then speak forth by shekeketomoodalakadadasi. By faith, I just spoke in tongues. I spoke in a language. It's, a, my, it's my heavenly language. Now, I can, that's my personal tongue. That's the tongue I use to build myself up. I can pray at my will anytime. 
but then there's a tongue and there's different gifts in the body that happens only as the Spirit wills. Tongues and interpretation of tongues in a service or in a street ministry, that's as the Spirit wills. And miracles and healings, there's things that happen that's as the Spirit wills. There's gifts of faith that happen when, you're, when somebody walks in and they're blind. And all of a sudden, you need, you've got natural faith. The Word will bring natural faith, but there's something that's called the gift of faith that the Holy Spirit will drop in you that you can look at that person and see them healed. And you just step and, you, and by the Holy Ghost, you just speak it. Next thing you know, if they jump out there, man, complete manifestation. That's how Jesus operated. He didn't see people sick. He saw them healed. Even though they were sick, he saw because the Father said, lay hands on them. He was hearing from the Father. And then, boom, man, that was manifestation right there. All that came to Jesus, all that came, the Bible says, all that came to him, wanting to be healed, were healed. Because Jesus had no fear. For months, now here's your breakthrough. We're talking about the breakthrough. For months, this is Andrew. I told you he was brought up strict Baptist. He says, for months I struggled to pray in tongues, even though I was convinced it was of God and I wanted it. But I had a hard time receiving that prayer language. Mom is in heaven now, but she had a fear of water as long as I knew her. And I was thinking about this the other day. It wasn't so much the fear of water. She didn't know how to swim. See, if you know how to swim, it, it, it don't matter how deep the water is, because you can swim. You can, what? You can overcome. But mom never swam, so she had a fear of water. If she, if she could have really focused on, Peter walked on water. If she could see herself walking on water, the fear, God could have took that fear from her. And she could at least got in ankle deep. <laughs> you know what I mean? But if you're scared, I mean, she, she did get in ankle deep. Understand me, she get in the pool, but when it got, you know, chest high, she's getting back. And if you got, if you out there funning with her, she will slap you. <laughs> Fear, fear has an action too. It'll react real quick, and she lets you know real quick too. I mean, she was a Christian, but she let some of them, some of them unchristian words come out. That's called the flesh. It doesn't mean you're not saved. It's just like your flesh dominates your spirit, and she give a cuss word, and you, Mama, you better back up because Mama don't usually don't say them words. So you know you're hitting a nerve. You know that dentist if he hits a nerve in your tooth and you ain't numb, you're gonna smack him probably. Or you're going to bite down on his whatever drill he's putting in your, tongue, in, your, in your mouth. That's a natural reaction. Well, fear was never brought to us to be natural. It was never a part of us. It's a spirit of fear. And God didn't give it to us, right? It came through the fall. Fear of death. God, it started. In the day you eat, you shall surely die. Adam didn't know what death was, but he found out in all their life they were fear of something they knew nothing about, was never supposed to experience it. But Jesus went to hell, conquered what? Death, hell, and the grave. So to a Christian, there should be no fear of death because we're not going to taste it, right? If we understand that, there's going to be a lot of people, once they get to heaven, they're like, man, I feared this all my life, and there was no fear. There was, it was no, I didn't even taste it. Just I, I, I breathed my breath and then my last and I was gone to heaven. So Andrew said a man came over to his house, was going to help him, and this, this man, this Christian, spoke in tongues. Because you can't help nobody. If you, if you ain't got nothing to give, you ain't going to help nobody. You need somebody that's got what you're after so you can receive it. But he came over to the house and, and he attempted to help Andrew, and he asked, if you repeat something I say in Spanish, would you be speaking in Spanish? And I nodded. Then if I spoke something in tongues and you repeated it, would you be speaking in tongues? Now this is the way he was trying just to get him to step out. Because that ain't the way you speak in tongues. You don't speak what I speak. But what he was, let me keep on reading here. Andrew said, yes, but I don't want to just repeat something. And that's good. Because I don't want to just preach something. <laughs> well, I don't want to just preach something, anything. I want to speak in tongues on my own. And he kept listening, so finally... Andrew said, I finally gave in. However, I stopped after only getting through the first couple of words because it embarrassed me. I told him I wasn't doing a very good job repeating what he said. And that's good because the, the, the Spirit can't do that. And he argued, yeah, but you were speaking in tongues because that wasn't English. So by then I had reached my limit. I said, no, I don't accept that. 
and Andrew, if you know Andrew and follow his ministry, he don't he he doesn't doesn't fall for anything. He knows the word, and the word knows him. And uh, over forty five years following Jesus, he's learned a few things, and you will too. Andrew said, "No, I wasn't speaking in tongues." So he just threw up his hands in frustration, and he left. So immediately after this, Andrew said, I was on my way to minister to someone in desperation. Desperation. I declared. It reminds me of what I told you about Sherry. Finally, she said, God, I've tried. I went to church. I did what you said. In desperation, she was crying out. And God spoke. God went past natural laws and, you know, revealed himself to her in a way that See, and I heard Andrew say the same thing. Why would God tell you something spiritually? In other words, do a, do a, in other words, appear to you or have a, have a, like, in the Old Testament there was a donkey at one time, Balaam, a donkey actually spoke. Wouldn't that, wouldn't that rock your boat? Mm -hmm. But why would God want to reveal something to you spiritually? In other words, you actually heard his voice if you've never read his word. You never opened the Bible. Because see, when God touched Sherry and said, Child, I am here. And she, she knew. She felt the presence of God's hand on her shoulder. But then he said, Open the book. See, because God, God has exalted. God, His word is settled. And if you get past the word without, you know, that's your foundation. Why would God reveal something to you audibly if you ain't trusted His word? Because that's, that's the owner's manual. How to live. I lived a, bless, a blessed life. Because Peter said this, if an angel appear to you and prophesy to you and you can't find in the word, he said, you, you be a curse. Call that angel a curse. You don't follow that. You get the word. Peter put the focus on the word. Jesus is the word and God took it through men, inspired it through the Holy Ghost, through men of old and they wrote this holy word down. Amen? So God is, he, he, he's particular about his word, <laughs> what he has said. It's a covenant. So, uh, so and Andrew said, in desperation I declared, God, I'm going to just start talking. I believe that you're going to help me speak in tongues. And I began, then I began making up some nonsense words and saying them out loud. It seemed silly to me, so I didn't feel very good about it. However, I realized that I'd said two words that did sound pretty decent. You understand, Andrew, his whole family were teachers, and he was going to college to be a teacher. I just listened to his. He, this, this week he's talking about how to hear the voice of God. And as he's going to college, this is after he got born again, after he really got, I'm sorry, after he got baptized in the Holy Spirit, he's in college, and then the Lord spoke to his heart and says, you need to quit school and, and come let me teach you. And his whole family was teachers. And his dad had died, so he was getting paid to go to college through his dad's social security. But you know what he did? He had to make a decision. Am I going to follow what I've been taught to do or am I going to follow what God's teaching me to do? And he, he is a teacher, but he was a Bible teacher. And he was going to school to be a school teacher. So the teaching gift was there. He was just directed by mom, which that's good. But as our kids, they're all different. God will point you the way, but he won't tell you. He, in other words, when I have a question, my pastor was always there, and I'd go to him, and he would point me to the Word. He wouldn't give me the answer because he knew I, the answer was in the Word. But he would direct me, and that's what parents are. Do We put the Word in our kids, and we've got to direct them. They've got to find God for themselves. They've got to find their purpose for themselves. Now, we can give him, moms, and we can see things in them. I know Dallas is a seer. He's a prophet. He watches people. He's a watcher. In the Old Testament, that's seers. They see things, know things. And he's a coach. He sees these kids. He, he, he. But see, there's more deeper than just that. Coaching kids and baseball and stuff, but I told him the other night, I said, it's more than that. I said, you want to do something that's going to impact these kids' life. And I'm not saying he's not, but in other words, you're Christian. Taking them to Jesus is what's going to really keep them. I mean, thank God, play baseball, football, all things you can. Enjoy it, but enjoy it with God. Because one day that stuff's going to be over. Mm -hmm. You're going to be past that. And to see Dallas coaching now and the opportunity, I mean, you can impact a child's life, a kid's life. Because you don't know what that kid's dealing with at home. Man, some of them, they got to get out on the field because, man, home, my home's tore apart. Man, I got to get out here with my buddies and I got to, you know, get, get out of that. 
So you got to get to know your people. So Andrew wants to know the Lord, man. He's stepping out here by faith. So he got a couple words going, and I figured that must be tongues. So I took those two words and started speaking them over and over and over. And before I knew how to pray as a Christian, I prayed the Lord's Prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Why? It was just, it was a prayer. I didn't know how to pray, but I got that was my foundation. But then I started learning that I can commune with the Father just like I talked to Judy or Colette. So my prayer now turned to, it don't have to be word by word. It's inspired, come on, it's inspired by the Word and by the Holy Ghost. And then you'll pray and you yield yourself to the Lord and you'll say a prayer, say something that you knew nothing about that touches somebody's life. Set some free. Um, so he did that, and upon arrival, I experienced the best time of ministry. I, upon arrival, he's going to this meeting. He said, I experienced the best time of ministry I'd ever had before. I was convinced it was because I'd been praying in tongues. And he was just praying those few words, but he was believing by faith that was God inspiring his language. And says, on my way home, I started praising God in the car and decided to pray using those two words some more. But I panicked when I couldn't remember them. <laughs> He's like, oh no, I had such a great thing and I lost it. Ever been there? And after struggling, struggling so long to pray in tongues, I had forgotten the only two words that I'd received. So then I thought, man, I'll just, I'll just get me another two words. So I started the process over again until another two words came. And using them for a while, I added a couple more and within a few moments, I was speaking fluently in the Spirit. So see, something broke. You know, and, and, and thank God he had a friend that come over that got him started, but he finally just found his knack with God. I found mine by meeting Andrew at FCC Christian Center. I just set my faith there. I said, I'm going to go down here. I've heard this guy preach on, on the radio, and he talks about the gifts and speaking in tongues. I've never had it, never heard it taught in a setting, but I read it in the Word. I said, you know what? If God says I need it, I need it. And I went over there, and that first night when I got in line, and he said, if anybody... You know, I could, probably can't even remember what he talked about through the whole service. I was just waiting on him to give that invitation because I've heard him minister on the radio. He would ask for it to be born. Because you've got to be born again because this is inspired by the Holy Ghost. You can't speak in tongues unless you're born of the Spirit. It's, it's a heavenly language. So he'd always ask, anybody want to be born again? And then he'd say, and if, it, if there's anybody here that's never been baptized in the Holy Ghost and speak in tongues, come on now. I ran. And wasn't nobody getting, taking my spot. I was getting down there because that's what I was there for. I set my faith. And when he came over there, laid his hand, you know, he just, he, a lot of times Andrew, he'll just put his hand on your chest and just pray, or it might be on your head, but I don't, I don't remember the touch. I just know Jesus touched me. And I spoke in tongues fluently. It's like oil. It's like I got, it's like anointing oil. Hit me from the top of my forehead all the way down. And been, been praying and thanking God for it ever since. Amen. Seen great things happen I would never have thought with my natural mind. Uh, so Andrew says, looking back, I know now that I could have spoken in tongues all along when I first got baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit. When you first get born again, it's kind of like tennis shoes. Of course, a lot of shoes now don't have tongues. We got all kind of crazy, but years ago, if you bought a pair of tennis shoes, it had tongues. They had tongues. Well, if you get born again, the Holy Spirit, his gift, one of his gifts is he comes with tongues. <laughs> Amen. It's just natural. You just got to tie in, you know, tie in to him and uh, release your faith. So the Holy Spirit was waiting for me to speak out in faith the words he'd been gently inspiring me to say all those years. And now at the end of this lesson, it just says, Andrew said, now it's your turn to do the same. So if you're watching by way of online video, uh, Word of Faith Worship Center, we believe in the full gospel. We're a full gospel church. We believe Everything that's written, as Jesus said, it's written. And if you have not been baptized in the Holy Spirit, I would in, in, uh, adjure you to go back and listen to our teachings. Uh, you can email me at pastorj at wofwc.org. That's, that's the church's email address now. And uh, you can send me an email. Uh, I'd be glad to pray with you. And it's an experience that... It's written in the Word. It's delivered through Jesus. He is the baptized. Jesus baptizes you in the Holy Spirit. First thing you got to do, you need to be born again. But then, the same way you put your faith in Christ to be saved is the same way. Is the same way that you step out in faith and speak in tongues. 
I just can't say it no simpler than that. Don't make uh, uh, speaking in tongues complicated. But if you need to, if you want that gift, need to flow in that gift, be sure to send us a, uh, send me a correspondence there at my email, and uh, be glad to get back with you on that. So Leo will end our live service. So you guys come back next week, next Wednesday. We'll be on a new series, and I'll let you know what it is next Wednesday. I think I know, but I'll let you know for sure. Amen. But for anybody here, I want to pray this prayer. And if you've never spoken in tongues or you know somebody that wants to speak in tongues and you want to, uh, if you need some help, uh, we can get you the CDs or DVDs or any, well, not DVDs, but we can do CDs of this service, of this teaching. Because this whole teaching is based on the new you and the Holy Spirit. So once you get born again, you've been made, uh, Jesus takes your spirit and you're born again. You, you're not going to get no holier when we get to heaven. Things are just going in your body is going to change. But down here, Jesus said, this gift of the Holy Spirit was given on the day of Pentecost. And this prayer, uh, like I say, I didn't have a lot of teaching, so I needed some help. And I heard Andrew, and that was my help. Me and Sherry both. Because my, you know, my wife was baptized that day by Jesus. Because she, 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 she told her experience like a warmth that went over her whole body. But we had never had any study about the anointing. We didn't know what Jesus did. And the Lord just don't want you to do something you don't have any knowledge about. And you know, his desire for us is to pray in tongues and, and to flow in the Holy Ghost and, and lay hands on the sick and believe for them to get healed. But unless you believe it, it's hard for you to do it. Well, you won't do it unless you believe it. And uh, so that's what we did. We both went down there and uh, we both received and life's been great. It's been getting better. So we're here to agree with you. So I'm going to pray this prayer. And if you need this, if you need to speak in tongues, let us know. If you have never have, uh, it's a free gift. That's what I like. It's free. Anybody like anything that's free. I've never turned down much that's not free, unless I don't know that person. Now, if it's food, I've got to know you before I'm going to take some free food. Right, Reed? Because not, not, every, not, every not every kitchen's good and clean, right? <laughs> not, nothing against people, but I know to take some good food. But I tell you what, anything that comes from the Father... Because the Bible says every good and every perfect gift that comes down from above comes from him. And, and he has given us that gift through Jesus. And Jesus said, when I leave, I'm going to send you another comforter. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a, a rest. It's called speaking into it's that refresh, that resting that came on the day of Pentecost when they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And that feeling brought speaking in tongues. They had the sign of tongues and fire. I've never seen that because that was a one... I believe that was, that was a one-time experience, but I have heard about the fire, people seeing fire, and I don't take nothing away from God, but that, when it fully came, we don't have to go to Jerusalem again to get filled with the Holy Ghost. I got filled sitting in my home. But, uh, so let's, let's, I'm going to pray, and you guys focus on this prayer, and let's agree together here. Is, that, is this prayer in your Baptizing me in the Holy Spirit, is it in y'all's syllabus? All right, well, y'all just listen here, because it's a... But Andrew's praying a prayer, and uh, we are putting this on the... Thank you for baptizing. I'm going I'm to personalize this prayer. Father, we thank you. Wonderful gift. Help us to walk in all his for that rest and refreshing for building my faith and keeping myself in your love and for revelation knowledge and interpretation for believers your word says that these signs, according to your word, Mark 16, 17, these signs shall follow those that believe. So we're believing for these signs. If we believed in you, Jesus, these are the signs that follow your believers, believers in Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, we shall cast out devils. In the name of Jesus, we shall speak with new tongues. And by faith, we will speak in tongues from this day forward in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen? So if you prayed that prayer...
You've never spoken in tongues, expect to. And like I say, it don't just happen. It is an act of your faith. It's just like we prayed, you say, Lord, I'm going to speak in tongues. And do like Andrew. I've told some people, sing a song. Amazing Grace. So que si da que solo si. So I can sing in the Spirit. I don't even have to know the words to the song as long as i got a tune. Man, and it just it blesses the Lord and it edifies me. I need to do it more often. Um, so now by faith, you say out, say out loud those words coming up, and it'll be a deep, it'll be like the Bible talks about it's a well of, spring, of water on the inside that, that springs forth out of your spirit. See, it don't come out of your head. It'll come out of your spirit. And as you uh, ask the Lord and, and yield your tongue, you just say out some words. Long. What I did, I, I just encourage people to just praise the Lord in your normal language. And then just trust him, Lord, I thank you, Lord. And, and what happens is you'll, the, the Lord will inspire It'll change. You just keep speaking, and it'll change. Don't try to make it change. G give you a little testimony, Judy. How did you, how did you receive it? Home, out? I, I, I was at a, a, a person's house at a prayer meeting, a prayer gathering, and they asked people to come forward for baptism of the Holy Spirit. And um, he, the guy just told me, he said, just praise the Lord. Just lift your hands and praise there you the go. Lord. And that's what I was doing. I was saying, thank you, Lord. Praise you. I just thank you. And as I was speaking, I was, I was filled with the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. And, and you were, what I like to say, and you were filled, and you overflowed. Mm -hmm. See, because what happens is once you get filled, you keep filling some up, next thing you know it overflows. And when that overflow is when you get the breakthrough, and you, it just flows out of you, and never let it stop up. So uh, I do want to take this time. We'll, we'll answer. we got questions, don't we? Yeah. Um, i tell you what, let's... Let's go ahead and go through our questions, and we'll come back, because I, I want to pray in tongues, a little bit of some worship music, and if anybody hasn't prayed in tongues, it's a good time just to step out there, like Judy says, and just praise the Lord. Uh, don't have to be as the Spirit leads you. So on our uh, answers, you guys questions, and I got the answers. Number one says, true or false, speaking in tongues is not something you do just once to prove you're, you've received the baptism in the Holy Ghost. True, true. It's, uh, it's, when it talks about they were filled, it says, it, it's, it, the, the verbiage there in the Greek is like, and be being filled. It's not just a one-time experience. You know, when, when this water, when that thing gets empty, man, I can either throw it away or I can fill it up. Well, God don't want to throw us away. <laughs> he wants us to, when we feel it, and we get in the Word and we start praising, next thing we know, we fill ourselves up and then we overflow. And the main thing is because you want to pour, you want to pour the Spirit on somebody else. Overflow on somebody else. Get them wet, man. Amen? Uh, when you pray in tongues, number two, what, what are three things that happen? You cause yourself to rest. You give yourself up. On your most holy faith. That's the main thing, man. You keep, see, you're preparing yourself. What, what would Jesus do a lot of times? He would go away into a mountain and he would pray. What was he doing? He wasn't separating himself. He was, he was from his disciples. So he was going to the Father and he was getting the will. He was, he was building himself up. He was in the presence of God, praying and communion with the Father. And he came down with results. Um, number three is you speak forth hidden wisdom and believe for interpretation. Blank will open up. Revelation, yeah, revelation knowledge will open up and supply blank you couldn't get any other way. Answers. There you go. Answers. There's been many times I've been praying the Holy Spirit. I'm working on a brand new appliance I ain't never seen before. That's one thing you get. The technicians will tell you, man, when you walk into somebody's house and you've never seen it, don't look at the customer and say, man, I ain't never seen this name before. Because <laughs> they want somebody qualified and professional working on their stuff. But and I get in there, you know what I do? You can speak in tongues quietly. In other words, in your spirit, you know, you can think aloud. Remember thinking aloud? You know, you think, you're thinking big. Well, you can pray in the Holy Spirit in there. And, and a lot of times I do it quietly, but I, on the inside, I'm like, next thing I know, the Lord has showed me something there or revealed something to me. I didn't, and there's no way. I'm like, I would have broke it if, I, if I'd have tried to pull that off the other way. 
he'd say that there's a little tab on the back. You know, so there's all little things that he does. Or a little screw, man, a little spring will pop off, and you're like, where in the world? Well, don't be, you know, just, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, Lord. Put the angels, Lord. And start coming. The next thing you know, there it is. And that's just God. It works. His word works. Acts 2, 4 says, And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to with other tongues as the Spirit gave them or inspiration. He inspired it. And number five, true or false, fear will short-circuit your ability to speak in tongues. Fear will short-circuit anything you want to do for God. It don't have to be in tongues. It can be being a witness, anything. If you get in fear about it, it can stop it, it, can stop it up. Um, number six, uh, will, will the Holy Spirit come upon you with such force that you won't be able to keep yourself from blurting out in tongues? No. Why not? Never force yourself. One thing the Lord has given us is a spirit of self-control. <laughs> in other words, the, the, the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. In other words, that, there are prophets now, apostle prophets in the body of Christ. Well, that prophet is subject, the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. In other words, he controls his self. God just don't come on you and you're just uncontrollable. That's what the devil does. That's flesh, man. The devil, he's a thief and he'll, he'll knock in the door. God knocks. Not, 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 can I come in? Not the devil. He coming in. If you leave a crack unlocked, he's going to bust in. But God says, can I sup with you? Yes, you say yes to Jesus. So he won't force anything. Uh, and number seven, what is the Holy Spirit waiting for? And see, it, when you step out in faith to say something that's in a, a prophecy, and it can be just a word. You might just have like just a word. You, you're in prayer. It ain't something you know. It's just something on the inside that's pressing you. You might have a word for somebody, just a word of encouragement. God loves you, and the next thing, when you say God loves you, God will just feel, he'll just give you more to say. See, when you step out, you know, Peter stepped out of the boat, and he was walking until what? Fear. He started fearing the waves and the wind. And what did he do? He didn't sink. What did he do? He began to sink. Because he stepped out in faith. He began, man, that was good. So step out. If you begin to say, man, that sounds stupid, don't, don't say, go to Jesus. Jesus, you said this is good. Keep speaking. And number eight, if you aren't fluent, in other words, you don't do it right away, what should you do? See a speech there? I like, come on, I like to read these answers here. See a speech therapist? Believe to receive the Holy Spirit again? Don't worry. All of the above or none of the above? <laughs> don't worry, be happy, Christian. Remember this song, don't worry, be happy. <laughs> Number nine, is God proud of you even if your tongue isn't fluent yet? Is, hey, Tammy, was you, was you, did you feel good when Darius said, ma, 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 ma? When that baby like, mama, 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 it took him a long time. It took us a long time to say, mama, dad. I don't remember which one the kid said first. Dad, dad. <laughs> oh, yeah, he, he, dad going to say but the main thing is, those first couple words, it just made you feel so good. Mm -hmm. So when God hears us say one word in an unknown tongue, it's known to him. You don't think he's like, man, he is, he's doing cartwheels in heaven. It'd be good. <laughs> Amen? Man, God saw me as a child trying to, trying to understand adult situations. And he said, man, he loved me so much. He saw the, he saw the abuse that we was under. You know, and people say, well, well you know, my family was in, in, in fear of my dad to come visit us because they knew how crazy he was. But God was so much loving me. I, I knew there was a God. I knew there was answers. I'm talking about as a two, second grader, first grader, playing with myself because my friends, I couldn't have friends over. Didn't know if dad was going to come home drunk and, and chaotic and, you know, couldn't invite friends over. But I, can, I knew there was a God. I knew this wasn't a, a good life. How? By the Holy Spirit, by God. He was, you know, just by having cats, <laughs> put you, putting you, put, loving a cat, man. I knew there was a God. I knew that this wasn't God. I just needed somebody to show me. I needed some good teaching, some good anointed teaching. 
and I eventually got it. Amen? <laughs> and I was a big part of the problem, too, because I ran away from God. But the, uh, he wanted us to run to him. So, Daddy's pleased. I said, Daddy's pleased. Uh, mm, I'm just thinking of just little things. Just Larry Honeycutt makes, makes me a cup of coffee, fixes me a cup of coffee every Sunday morning. You know what? That blesses God. I mean, it blesses me, but you know what God says? Man, somebody thinks enough, somebody make them some coffee. Just so those little things, man, he's happy, blessed. What should we do? Number one, what should you do to get tongues to flow out of your, out of you unhindered? Hindered. Don't worry about yourself so much. Man, just... Anybody rode a bicycle? Everybody rode a, any, anybody ride a bicycle? Come on, if I, nobody, is anybody, has anybody not ridden a bicycle in here? Okay, there we go. So you could, if you haven't ridden one in a while, you could still ride it, right? Yes, you can. You, you might be a little wobbly. <laughs> well, like I said, the main thing is, like, like Reed just answered there, if you want to really be a good bicycle rider, bicyclist, Keep doing it. Keep pedaling, man. Well, just keep speaking in tongues. If you had never spoke, spoke a couple words. Praise God. Because, see, it's like Brother Hagin says, that's really the doorway into all the other things that God wants to do in our lives, miracles. and uh, Man, we're in the last days. Man, there's people out here doing crazy stuff in the name of God, and it ain't. <laughs> and uh, the, these last days, the biggest thing is going to be Praying, keep yourself built up. No, that's deceiving. That's deception. That ain't true. And, you know, that's one advantage of it right there. Uh, any prayer requests tonight? Because we're going to pray a little bit in the Holy Spirit, and that'd be a good time to put something before the Lord. And the gentleman with it, you've been here before, haven't you? I thought, and your name again? Great. Gray, we're well, glad to have you tonight. I know you look familiar. Even with the mask on, I know I've seen the eyes before. <laughs> glad you came back tonight. But uh, any prayer requests? Anybody personal prayers? Did you pray for Jack? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, he was having some procedures done, so everybody, y'all keep, keep past your Jack. And he's, uh, Jack's already made his request known, so, you know, praying in the Holy Spirit during the week, just let God... See, a lot of times you don't have to remember everything we prayed. Just remember that we pray and remind God, because God knows all. He just needs our faith put with his faith in heaven so he can release the power. Down here through the doctors, it comes through doctors, it comes through friends. Uh, you know, we don't know the doctors, what they do. We don't know... If they, they drink a lot when they come home, when they come back to work, you know, we don't know all the doctors, but God does, and he can steady their hands if, they're, if they don't have, I've seen some doctors, they don't have a steady hand anymore. I remember old Dr. Britton operating on me, I've only had one operation, and I was a teenager, I was a sophomore in high school, and had something called cat scratch fever, y'all ever heard that? Cat, yeah, I had, it's like a gorder, it's like a, it, came, it kept getting bigger on my, in my inner thigh down there, where it was like a bait, like a, like two, two uh, golf balls, and hard, if you touch it, it got hurt, so I had to have it cut out. And he was an old doctor, and I wasn't, I wasn't too thrilled about him operating on my leg, but you know what? Mom said, got to go to the hospital, so. But you know what? I, God, God loved me through some stupid teenage stuff, because I got out of the hospital, and I was a rowdy, rebellious teenager. You know, I, was, I, I drank alcohol even when I was probably 14 years old, because I had buddies that would get it. Got out, I was on pain medication, popping 500 milligrams and drinking, and drinking beer. Passed out. Thank God for his mercy, you know. Save me from the cat scratch fever. Here I go, go out here and drunk and, and dr taking medicine and drinking beer. And passing out thinking it's cool, man. That's how, see, that's what the devil wants. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy. But, but God, God saw somebody preaching. <laughs> so see, don't think you too bad. Don't think people are too far gone that they can't be saved and turned. Amen. So, Pastor Jack, uh, and we know Jack, you know, he, he was in prison doing hard drugs. You know what? God got a hold of him, turned his life around. 
So he needs the healer to show up now. And uh, pray for our nation. We got a we got a border crisis. You know, following in the news, we got a lot of people coming in this in this these borders that have, are testing positive for COVID, and they're just letting them in. And so we need to pray for some wit. That's wisdom. We need to pray for wisdom and protection to these uh, border patrol. The, uh, the governor in Texas called the National Guard in uh, because he's got a man. He's got to watch over his Texans. He's got to watch over his people. So uh, and it's not the only place. So be praying for situations like that when you hear. Uh, be praying for wisdom over our leaders, over our uh, all men and women kings in leadership around the world, that they would come to the knowledge of Jesus, knowledge of the truth. Yes. Yeah, that's what we need, the knowledge of the truth. Yeah. And, 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 and see, we got to leave the rest to God. It's just like Paul, you know. Paul was doing the Christian, doing the world harm, and Jesus showed up. And we pray that Jesus shows up in our life because if not, something's got to stop. You know, God's not going to let evil keep going, and he wants their soul. But his, you know, his judgment is on the unrighteous. And his, his children, you know, that wrath was poured out on Jesus, but not for the ungodly. It's not so. His mercy is there, but it comes to the point to where God has to draw a line. And, and But we, what do we do? We pray for their soul you know, and pray that they change. Uh, so let's take some time. And I got a, everything works not like a head. Oh, uh, yeah. on the prayer list. She's, she's been um, like she's really tired and uh, she gets really nauseated. And the doctor went to the doctor and he did blood work and all the blood work came back good except the like the rheumatism, the mm -hmm. arthritis and rheumatism is borderline. She said it hurts in her joints really bad. And the doctor said it could that she may have to send her to a rheumatologist or she may have uh, some kind of virus. And she said that can go on for a long period of time. Okay. But it's just some days she says she, she's getting where she just can't, you know, hardly go. Like a day you said she was working on the bylaws and then she said she got up, she was just kind of, couldn't hardly move her back right. or just. Right. Amen. And you know, I, sometimes some things hits me in my joints. This finger gives me some mm -hmm. issues because I. Whatever I did to it, but you know what? Just I receive prayer, but pray for joints. You know, anything that comes against you, God, can, he, he does the small details. He can handle the small things, and he can handle the big things. See, some people think, well, I can get by without this. I'm doing okay. No, give it to the Lord. You know, receive your healing. Uh, help people. You know, I remember Andrew one time at one of his meetings down there. He was praying, and a guy came up. He had like 15, 20 things in the prayer line. And he said, all those things. He said, but I can live with all this. If you'll just, if God can just heal my, whatever it was. And Andrew looked at him, so, uh, so you want God to take care of this and you'll live with all the rest because it's just going to bombard the gates of heaven. You're going you're gonna to dim the power of heaven and of God to do this for you. And he was like, eh, that's kind of a stupid prayer, wasn't it? <laughs> so if God can do the little, he can, he can take care of all of it. I mean, remember the, ten, remember the 10 leper? Was it 10 lepers that came? And nine of them got healed. Jesus said, go show yourself to the priest. But one came back and said, Lord, I just want to thank you. He says, where's the other nine? They, are they not thankful? But he got, he was made whole. There's, there's power in thankfulness. Lord, thank you. So that, that's a powerful tooth to the devil right there. Thank you, Jesus, for making me whole. Amen, he wants to make you whole. So let's just pray. If you haven't ever prayed in the Holy Ghost, ask the Lord to fill you and loose your tongue. But let's just pray. Pray a little bit in the Holy Spirit. Give the Lord some time. It don't take long for Him to do anything. He just needs people in faith. He needs faith to move through, these, move through this world. So Father, we just thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we just yield our tongues to you tonight, Lord. You said when we pray in the Holy, in the Holy Spirit, Lord, when we come together, as a corporate body, Lord, there's a corporate anointing, Lord. And we just thank you, Father God, for a stammering lip and tongue that you give us, Lord, for this rest and this refreshing. That we can come in here, Lord, we can be refreshed in the spirit. Lord, I just I just sense a powerful anointing in here tonight. Because the Lord said, you know, He's He said, when you teach my word, I'm there to manifest myself. And signs and wonders will follow in the ministry and the teaching of the word. So Father, we just thank you, Lord. For signs and wonders flowing through this church, through the members of this church, through the hands of this church. 
through the lips of the tongues of this church, Lord, with tongues, the fire you have released through the body of Christ, Lord. We are a, 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 a church that the Bible says, that, Lord, you said the gates of hell shall not prevail against this church. So, Lord, we just speak against the gates of hell that's trying to take over and rule and reign in the United States and around the world. All this evil right now, Father, we just thank you, Lord, for giving us a tongue that we can speak and we can call freedom. We can call people free from the devil, free, Lord, to open up the eyes of those that are deceived in this land, that are deceived in our nation, Lord, that they would see Jesus, that they would see him in the word that they've heard in Sunday school, that, Lord, you would reveal yourself not as a carpenter, but, to, but as the lion of the tribe of Judah that's coming back to, to, to bring judgment on this earth, Lord, but you want a people to be born again. Lord, you don't, they don't want, Lord, you don't want them to see your wrath. You want them to see your mercy. And Lord, you sent us Jesus to see the mercy and the love. Father, because we know that in the end times, Lord, that Jesus is going to return. There's going to be a time of great tribulation going to be on this earth, but before then, Lord, that you, we're going to speak for There's going to be mighty signs and wonders happening as, it, as in the days of Noah, Lord. Pouring out your spirit, Father, we just thank you for the, for the gifts of the Holy Spirit being poured out and being lived out through the church, through this church and many other churches rising up, Lord, and proclaiming and declaring the truth that Jesus is Lord and he is Lord of all. He's King of kings and he wants his children to come home. So Satan, we bind you right now that's trying to keep children from coming to Jesus. For homes that are broken to be restored right now in the name of Jesus. For our land, Lord, to be, for righteousness to be exalted. And for your people, Lord, we stay humble before you. And cry out before you day and night for, for repentance and revival across our land. And Father, we just thank you for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. If anybody in this body tonight, Lord, has never spoken in tongues or has... Uh, doubts or fears of speaking in tongues, Lord, I just release that right now in the name of Jesus. That, Lord, I loose their tongues, Lord, it'll be, they'll flow from them fluently, Lord. And they will see mighty, mighty signs, and Lord, and wonders that you'll work through this body, through these people, your people, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for Pastor Jack, Father. We know that the storm he's in, Lord, but you said peace to the storm. So, Lord, we just agree with Jack and we speak peace to these storms that's risen against him, Father, physically. Right now, in the name of Jesus, they are not from you, Father. And we, we speak against them right now in Jesus' name. We speak and call Jack free. We call him blessed. And we call him covered in the blood, washed from the top of his head to the soles of his feet to finish his race and to run with the victory. Let him, he'll walk in the victory that you have for him, Father. And we thank you for that, Lord. We pray for our youth. We pray for the youth in this land right now, Father for a heart of fire for our youth, Father, in Jesus' name. Revival breaking out in this land. For this is the land of the free and the home of the brave. And it's on, we're only here because of your great mercy and grace. And Father, we just thank you that mercy cries out, no, no, they won't, lock, no, 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 no. They won't go that way, they'll, go to, they'll come to Jesus. Lord, let the world see Jesus through us, Lord. And we just give you the the honor and the praise tonight, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs>